Hello! Welcome to Ivana's Noshk Life. Today I will answer three main questions about PhD. The first one it is a PhD duration in Norway. The second one it is a type of tasks or PhD assignments that you have to finish within this duration. And the third one uh, different types of PhD dissertation. So let's start. Let's start with the first one. The first question it is PhD duration or how long does it take actually to go through the PhD? And I want to talk specifically about Norway because in different countries there are different regulations. So in Norway there are two types of the PhD duration. So how long you can take a PhD? The first one it is a three years PhD and the second one it is a four years PhD. And the main difference between those two, it is that in the first case, when it's three years PhD, you focus only on your PhD research. So all three years, you focus on answering your research questions and um, doing tasks that I will talk about later. However, when we talk about four years PhD, it's a slightly different form. If um, in a more like logical sense, you can say that it's the same three years as you had in the first case, but you have additional one year that has to be spent on the duties work. Uh, quite often, even though we are saying three years of uh, PhD and one year of duty work, typically we divide each year each of four years into 75% time spending on your PhD and 25% each year we spend um, on doing your duties work. And let's talk more about what is uh, what are those duty uh, tasks. It could be assisting a teacher or professor in some course. It could be a master level course. The second type of uh, duty work is actually participating in different organizational uh, meetings at your department or maybe helping with some activities uh, with your department that are not related to your PhD work. And the third one, um, from my perspective, what could be considered as duty work is also helping in different projects. So it could be another research project where you are helping out with uh, some task and it's not related to your PhD. The second question that uh, you asked me, it is different PhD tasks or assignments. So what actually do the PhD, uh, PhDs in Norway? Uh, maybe you have seen my previous videos about PhDs. And you know already that PhD, it's not a student, it is a job at Norway, so if you're an employee, you gain salary, you pay taxes, and you have all the same benefits as other employees at university. So um, the task, of course, you have also some tasks. First of all, at Norwegian universities, it is expected that you will take courses on 30 credits. 30 credits in my faculty, I'm faculty of engineering. So we have additional four credit uh, mandatory course for all PhDs who enroll in uh, PhD in, at faculty of engineering at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology or shortly NTNU. So altogether, it means that for me, for example, I had the requirements of 34 credits needed to be completed within uh, my duration of the PhD. Uh, it's also important to understand that these courses that you select, there is also kind of requirements to the courses. Not more than 10 credits uh, could be taken as a master level course, but all rest of the credits, they have to be done as a PhD level course, doctoral level course. And the second one is actually related to the research itself. So you need to be able to read academic articles, to do a literature review, or maybe sometimes you can hear this uh, state of the art. Then, of course, you need to be uh, writing your own articles. And typically the first one, it is a literature review where you search uh, what is done in the world and you kind of define, the, you try to find the gaps and publish it. So then those gaps could be used, some of them in your research. So first you need to get a wide understanding of your topic to be able to go deep. Then, uh, so the first it's 
reading articles, second writing articles that are publishable in uh, journals or conferences. And it's a huge pain for PhDs, don't think that it's easy. And we can talk about that separately in another video, but not now. Then another part of the task that uh, you need to do, it is design and con conduct experiments. Of course, it depends a lot on your research direction. For example, if you do a social study where you are in a philosophy direction, so if the think about engineering and social studies, the term experiments could be taken differently. It could be some type of simulation on the computer. It could be even um, conducting interviews. Let's say that I call experiments any way of collecting the data. In my research, I was actually running editing manufacturing machine. I was designing experiment. I was running those experiments and I was collecting data based on the physical experiment that I did in my lab. In other type of uh, research, most likely you will not do this, but you will do something else. You need to conduct experiments. You need to collect some type of data related to your research and being able to analyze this data. So the next type uh, task uh, after you conduct your experiments, it is being able to analyze your findi findings, organize them in an understandable way to present to, to other people and then be able to publish them. So altogether, if you think about a PhD, doing a PhD, it is a process of learning how to become an so to say, independent researcher in the future, uh, a good researcher in the future. And then the last task, organizing all your results into a PhD dissertation. So this is the final task of the PhD, it is to write a PhD dissertation. And here we come to the um, question number three, it is a PhD dissertations. There are different types of PhD dissertation, and you need to know this before you actually start your PhD. So if we talk about types of PhD dissertation, uh, there are article-based and monography. Uh, monography is kind of a regular book. So it's like the whole story you have introduction, we call it IMRAD structure. You have introduction, you have method, you have result and discussion and conclusion. So it's a large book. This is the monography. But if we talk about uh, article-based, it, it, it means that you need to publish a specific number of articles and then you need to be able to write, we call it kappa, a first part, you have a part one, uh, a kappa, which also has in-write in structure, introduction, method, uh, results and discussion. But it is a short version in which you show how your published articles they answer your research questions and how they actually related to each other. So kind of shortly you present the more generic picture and then the second part people can go and read your articles. The main difference between those two is uh, to write kappa, it's uh, much quicker, it is much shorter than monography. Monography is a large book that covers all the three or four years of your PhD and where you present everything from scratch. Uh, but the difference is that how you plan your articles in the very beginning of the PhD and uh, to have enough of the published papers to be able actually to go to the defend. And we can talk about this topic um, next time if you wish, uh, or maybe the, the like, like in a couple of next times. So this is three different things. And then you come to the end where you do a PhD defense. I will not cover it here, but uh, PhD defense itself, it's a large topic to talk about and we will take it uh, in a couple of next videos. So I hope you find it useful and interesting. Thank you for watching until the end. I would be happy if you ask your questions in the comments so I can build my uh, next videos useful for you. And Thank you for watching me. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and see you next time. Bye!